So now they're definitely committing to a more, you know, defensive strategy, if we'll say that at the least. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's what you got to do game one. See how things work. Uh, I, I don't think they've stopped yet, so uh, I think they're very aggressive options from them before, so we'll see what they can do here. The, yep. the block Obama. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So we have Didi and Jake versus Lima and Pope. I think PS2, it's the Georgia Classic they're going to start out there, and we can already see Pope starting on that Ivy Sword, like I mentioned, yep. maybe trying to find a way to deter both of the Steves from actively farming. Yeah, and you'll see I think a lot of Pokemon trainers, you know, especially in singles, will start with Squirtle, but with doubles, just being able to control the space and, and against the Steve, uh, going to be a little bit easier matchup to be able to get around their options uh, to stay aggressive. Yeah, I mean, Didi taking a very nice combo on that side of the stage, but I'm wondering, how do you break this zone as Bayo? You know you do have tons of combos off of the Afterburner kick, but how else are you going to maybe extend, especially when you have two Steves just actively mining and woo, almost dying to the... Charizard up smash. Yeah, and a lot of uh, you know Lima's options here have been pretty aerial. Oh, someone, Jake just lost a sock. I didn't even see what happened, but there it goes. Yeah, I mean, Char so we see Puppet going to the Charizard, basically trying to ensure a larger life by going to the Charizard. So when Jake built a wall to try and go onto the other side, Puppet immediately snapped that option and has been using this up smash to punish the Steve. But again, we see, I like how Puppet has been controlling this stage, and Lima has just been following up off of these. You know, combos that PT sends you, you know, sends you right up into the, in the air. And Bayonetta, definitely one of the characters that can punish those very quickly. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, some uh, extra team hits from Blue Team going to make it uh, get them almost 100%. So they might be looking for a kill soon. There is one. Yeah, Blue Team lose his first stock. But Charizard, are a pretty heavy boy, so he might be able to live for a long while longer. Yeah, I mean, he might be online for a little, a little while longer, but... DD also at a very high percent, and you can see Puppet now trying to find a grab. That Charizard back yeah. throw is nothing to be trifled with. Ooh, DD trying to go for a trump there on that side of the stage. going to throw him off. Puppet and to come back. I do like how Jake is definitely giving DD the respect to say, okay, you, can, you know a way to get out. I'm going to make sure Lima isn't allowed to engage in the game. Closing out the stock quickly, and now... Four even stocks. Yeah. Oh, as I say that? Oh, okay, not dead yet. But <laughs> It's close to even stocks and close to even percents. I mean, when you Ooh. think about Bayo, being at 101% is definitely much more intimidating than Steve at 101%. And I, again, Puppe, great use of go switching between the Pokemon to try and command the situations in different ways. Yeah, here we go, center stage. Oh, I was going to say it was it was all uh, uh, DDs, but... Unfortunately, probably on the other side, going to take the stock. So Jake on his last stock of the set, but Lima not looking too great at 128. Bayo not very heavy, so. No, not, not at all. And I think one thing that we've seen very well from both Puppe and Lima Ooh. is stock preservation. But as I say that, DD seals it out with a back air. And now Jake really trying to set up and let DD gain more resources. You can see Jake has no iron, so there yep. a couple of threats are offline from Jake. So with one stock on the board and percent racking up from Lima, you're going to have to be a little bit more cautious Ooh. and unfortunately losing a stock to Didi's Anvil. Yeah, a lot of, uh, you know, sort of collateral damage we've seen from that Anvil today so far. Oh, my gosh. And unfortunately, for Didi, going to lose his stock. Big comeback potential here uh, from Jake. But, I mean, he won't have any time to do anything against these, these two guys that are just smothering him right now. Oof, Lima almost taking out Puppe right there. Yeah. But I do like how Puppe has been walling out both of the Steves using the back airs to great effect. And... Like I said, if you Ooh. go anywhere above both of the platforms, Lima, uh -oh. just like this ledge trap, so efficient at mm. keeping you in the combos and just racking up percent. Yeah, nice play. I mean, Lima's like defensive play. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. What is he doing? Ooh. Wow. Great. Think they planned that one out? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> a great. Just like we drew it up. Yeah, I was going to say, just a great use of the counter from Lima to set up that Vine Whip from. Puppe, we know that Ivysaur's love to look for that down throw, up, you know, up the special to try and close out. And it was such a good idea to co cover that option. Coming from Jake trying to swing out at disadvantage, you now set up, give Puppe a gimme up B. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, as you said, you know, Jake kind of came out swinging there a lot. I think there was uh, the defense from Lima was really spectacular. I mean, you go back and look at that. The time team made a lot of those perfect parries. The... Uh, you know, just the shielding at the right moment and, and be able to punish Steve. I feel like he knows this matchup pretty well, uh, so it's not phasing him. 
Uh, and then, you know, Puppet just playing a really good teammate, always being there, getting a lot of kills with Charizard last time. So we'll see what they can do to adapt here the Steve team. Yeah, DD already adapting and now just trying to smother Puppe so he oh, doesn't yeah, get that. that space to set up those zones with the Oh, Ibu's. no! And maybe Gimpy can... Whoa! Wow, Tail sealing out the stock at such low percent. Relatively unharmed from both players. Yeah, technically a zero to death. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, there, it's a huge shift we've seen from DD's behavior and now... Jake's still kind of going with the same plan of trying to mess with Lima, kind of trying to take out his game plan, but Lima doing a good job of combo breaking for Puppe. Yeah, Puppe already at 60, 73, 80 on his second stock. They're just going to town on him. Lima obviously still playing pretty defensively, but already got 82 on himself. I mean, scary times. He's got kids two Steves. I mean, you have to think also about how you do make, Ooh. like we said, we've been trying to make these adaptations throughout the game. I think they finally did recognize, you know what? Puppet's Pokemon are one of the bigger threats right now. It has the kill power. It enables Lima to get these continuous combos on us. So let Lima ha get the combo. Or yeah. Yeah, I would say, you know, Lima got so much mileage out of being defensive last game. But now because they're, oh my gosh, losing the stock there. Jake Nolan's his first one. But, oh my gosh, stocks galore. They're going down. Uh, let's see, add them up. Looks like Blue Team is now down one stock. We got four fresh, though, all at zero. So let's see what they can do here. Yeah, and now Didi on the mine, already on the diamond, and Jake, you can see how they're, while they're recovering or trying to get back to the stage, they're both passively mining and trying to gain resources and at least establish some level of momentum. Yeah, but Puppet hasn't had a chance to set up any of these bear walls, none of these mm. Razor League conversions that we saw to great use last game. But Lima still doing a good job keeping people in these aerial combos, but I, it seems like when you're missing that crucial piece of the puzzle, which is the Pokemon Trainer, the plan just falls to pieces. Yeah, and I think the, the Steves have come together here. Going to take out Puppet's last stock. Going to get the share stock. Uh, because they've been focusing on Puppet, uh, Lima has had to be you know, on the front foot here. They've had to be a bit more aggressive uh, to make those opportunities, and that's where they've gotten extra stocks and extra percent as well. So going to go back to even stocks now. Uh, Jake looking not so great on his second stock. Not many resources either, but... Uh, we'll see what they can do to come back. Obviously, has Diamond in the pocket, so whenever he needs it, he's ready for it. Yeah, I mean, both players just trying to rack up percent. You can see now Jake and DD trying to fish and take out Puppe. We know how threatening that Charizard was after game one, especially getting oh two ups, and now dying to the Lava Block. You know, this is not a position that you want to be in big play where you see basically just getting your combo food is Charizard. Yeah, and it's you know really scary for Lima losing that stock first. Uh, you know, you'd think the Bayonetta would be the easier one to 2v1 here. Charizard, you know, a lot of laggy moves. That's going to do with the diamond. Not yet, but, uh, you know, maybe a foregone conclusion here. Yeah, not yet, but see, this is what we were talking about last time, Ooh. or at the start of the game, rather. You're worried about DD. They're yep. both at high percents. So Jake immediately creates a large space of distance between the two of you, and now I'm just going to farm. Yeah, there's there nothing go. to worry about. But, you know, it looks like everything fell apart after game after game one, like we said, when you're looking at Puppe and Lima. How would you maybe course correct by going to a different stage? Do you try and go back to form in that original strategy? What would you do? Yeah, I mean, the the, the, the Steves there really did a whole tonal switch in their strategy. Uh, you know, they went to focus Puppe, uh, did really well, because that early lead as well, uh, which put, you know, Lima, mainly Lima, I would say, on the on the front, or on their front foot to be able to get off their back foot. Uh, that put Lima in a bit more of an uncomfortable situation, so he couldn't see his you know, incredible defense. Uh, you know, we'll see what they can do to slow things down. I think that might be, <laughs> you know, maybe an oxymoron against Steve's, especially in doubles. But uh, you know, when they were sort of have, be able to set the pace, when Blue Team was setting that pace, that's when they were doing well. Uh, you know, when it's <laughs> when you're playing Steve's game, you're not doing so well. So let's see what they can do to control that uh, on this stage. You know, I do love to see ha that Lima and Puppe both agree to go to a smaller stage, saying small battlefield, we're not going to give you as much room to mine. And now, Puppe is now playing almost a bodyguard role for Lima, just saying, yeah, you have to, you'll have to deal with me, try and break through my zone, but we're going to focus on basically making Jake combo food for yeah. Bayonetta. We're going to send him up and just get as much as we can off of these. Oh my gosh, so crazy strong start. He was holding that for days. God, he was holding that option, and you definitely know that Jake felt confident to say, all right, you're going to either hit both of us or <laughs> someone's going to die. And yep. unfortunately lost that gamble. Yeah, crazy. Fully charged session. I was going to take that first stock. Uh, I mean, blue team starting off really well uh, comparatively. Uh, almost I'm flipping the script from last game. But oh my gosh, we'll lose the stock there. Pretty much even so far. Yeah, DD at 111%. And this is where you do have to try and make the most out of your high percent stocks. But Ooh. oh, get sealed out by 
DD again. Yeah. The Steves are up five, five to four, but this lead can be evaporated in seconds because both Steves are getting there up to high percent. Oh, yeah. So back to even uh, stocks, but obviously Jake looking a little worse for wear, but I feel like with how light Bayonetta is, uh, and Lima's defense not being as good as game one, he's kind of, you know, got some ground to make up here. But obviously, as long as you don't get killed too early, you'll do fine. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens here. Yeah, I think one thing that we have that we have seen to pretty good use so far coming out from, at least from Pape, is the immediate switches to Charizard when you are at that threatening percent. And good job from Lima sealing out that stock. Now, the Steve's looking at a little bit of a deficit to come back from, but I think DDD is almost, deep, or DD rather, is playing a little bit too defensive now. When you were crowding Pape and making him choose options actively, you had much greater success yeah. in game two. Yeah, and I think that's really more Pape's doing too. Like, he's not playing particularly as aggressive, so he's playing a bit more, you know, on the backside, be able to cover options there. Gonna get the kill there. Uh, no, not quite. We're just gonna miss it out on the side there, but the big back air. Oh, and he's gonna lose his stock. What a turnaround. Yeah, I mean, losing your, losing your stock as Charizard sub. 120 or 130, it does feel bad, but that Steve Mark Minecart has such great kill power, and DE has definitely been looking for oh. Puppy to overextend and uh, the spikes. Now, head the down. Steve spikes. Oh my gosh, she's dead! Oh my god, with this turnaround. So it's three stocks to one now. Blue team way on the back foot, but it is Lima. Bayonetta can have some crazy, uh, you know, be able to get a lot of combos that are very safe on the 2v1 options. Steve's, though, they're going to take their time, use what they can, get that percent. They got a lot to make comebacks here, but. Uh, you know, either Steve's could get killed off pretty early here. Let's watch out. Yeah, There's the one. And now it's DD at a healthy percent, but Jake at that 93, like you said, Lima knows how to make these combos and make the most of them. Nice. Yep. Good job using the counter to try and set up something in the air, but Jake, you have to be careful when you're being carried up this high. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing here. When 2v1, you got to make it a 1v1. That gives you the chance. That's your first step. Uh, obviously, Jake and him, you know, Sit back. He's at higher percent, so we don't want him close. But Bayonetta can get in there pretty quickly. Oh my gosh, the Anvil going to take it. That's the game, dying at 80. The Anvils have been causing so many problems <laughs> across so many sets today. Man. It is tough to get around that option because you're seeing them short hop basically sitting above the shield and then finally dropping that Anvil. You flicker your shield. Now That's, you're dead at 80. Yeah, I need to buy some stocks in uh, Acne Corporation, man, because those <laughs> Anvils, they're going up. Stocks are going up, man. People are buying them. It's hot. It's a hot stock. I mean, good comeback coming from